You could have knocked me over with a feather when you called. Of all the people I never expected to hear from. Well, after a month, I got a sudden urge to see an old familiar face, you know. Well, I see you're still painting. Oh, I'm painting all right. And I tell you, Jerry, I get frightened when I think what could have happened to my talent if I'd stayed in Nebraska. New York saved my life. I'm painting with my guts now, boy. I got a whole new outlook. Oscar, 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 will you kindly come and look at the spaghetti? I'm telling you, it's going to stink. Who cares? Come here. Sophie, 
Meet Jerry Ryan, an old friend from back home. There's an artist for you. Who cares? <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Jerry. Look, you're an old friend. Influence him. He should look at the spaghetti, huh? Oh, sure. You go on, Oscar. I'll be fine. Hang around. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah then fix yourself a drink, huh? Mingle a little. <laughs> Is the purpose of art to communicate? Just answer me, yes or no? Pardon me. Pardon me, I beg your pardon. The way you ask that question is typical of your entire attitude. Dogmatic conformity. I just don't want to start making compromises, you know? You saw my improvisation. What's the motivation? Absolutely clear. Well, I, I did feel a certain dichotomy, if you want to know the truth. There was your motivation and the motivation of the character. You know what I mean? What are you, Rockefeller? You can eat out all the time? A nice little icebox like this, you'll save yourself a fortune. Look, I'm trying to do you a favor. What are you so suspicious? At five bucks, I'll get rich? I will be five bucks less rich, won't I? Look, any place you go, what's a cottage cheese salad? At least a buck, right? Would you buy a carton, 20 cents, you put it in the icebox and you're in business. If you get some sense and change your mind, you give me a ring. I'm in the book, Gittle Mosca. M-O-S-C-A, Mosca. <laughs> you got a light? Put on that, nobody will know you at the wrong party. <laughs> Hecky, I've got a story saved up for you. The punchline even. Hello? Miss Gittle Mosca. Just me? Who's this? This is Jerry Ryan. We met yesterday at Oscar's party, in a way. Jeff? I uh, lit your cigarette. You thought I was at the wrong party? No, you're the one with the hat that didn't say anything. You must know some pretty talkative hats. Huh? Listen, uh, about that icebox you were trying to sell, do you suppose I could stop by and take a look at it? No, oh, I gave it away. Some jerk I never saw in my life. Sophie sent him over. I'll let him have it just to get rid of the damn thing. Well, why didn't you ask me yesterday? No, it was too big a move yesterday. Today I decided to change things, join the living. About uh, ten minutes ago. I thought I'd start by uh, dropping in on you. Yeah, but I haven't got it. 
Well, all the same. I thought maybe I'd drop in and... Yeah. Well, thanks anyway. Yeah. his last night. What's his number? He's one look and you got ants in the pants? Uh, uh, you drag your mind up out of your girdle and go see if Oscar's got it written down. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were so delicate. Wait a minute. Gittle, it's circle five, nine, nine, seven, oh. You got that? Nine, nine, seven, oh, yeah. Uh, if something comes of it, don't be an end great. Give a thank you. <laughs> Very funny. I'll give you a commission. Listen, I've been thinking about that icebox. I could take you around the corner where this character lives and you could offer him a buck or two. I mean, he might let it go. He got it for nothing. What do you say? Hey, you still with me? Well, I don't know yet. How'd you get my number? Uh, Sophie. Oscar had it. Now, about the icebox, what do you think? Well, first of all, I don't think you're calling about any icebox. Huh? You're calling because you have nothing better to do? Oh, I got 11 different things I could be doing. Different isn't better. So why aren't you doing them? Look, how'd I get in the wrong here? Did you call me up about this icebox or not? Not. Oh, well, then I can't follow this whole conversation. You called. I called because I was going out of my head in solitary. I called to make contact with someone of the weaker sex who's uh, weaker. Okay. Here I am. Contact. I uh, called to ask you to dinner tonight and a uh, show, if you'd like. What? <laughs> So why didn't you? Well, I was afraid you'd say yes or no. Well, I would have said sure. You see, that's what I mean. Right away we have problems. What show? Where to eat? Oh, wait, wait. Now I'm not so sure. I don't know if I want to get involved. You sound awful complicated. Oh. Well, I'm the girl, right? And you're the man. Make up your mind. Then ask me to dinner and I'll make up my mind. I've been trying to make up my mind for a month. What, to ask me to dinner? No, to uh, get unstuck from a piece of fly paper. You know, after you've broken your leg in five different places, you hesitate to make that first step. The reason I hung up on you was because I didn't want to have to say, please, help me. Look, I got a date with some kids. It'll keep me busy till maybe uh, half past six. So why don't we meet where we're going to eat, huh? Say quarter to seven? Say quarter to seven. Hey, you like the Chinese? Yeah. Well, there's a place, the Peacock on 4th Street, near Sheridan Square. It's in the book, Cantonese. Hey, is it okay enough to? Is what okay enough to? Your leg. <laughs> I don't know. It may have affected my head. But I'll meet you. The Peacock, Cantonese 645. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I know. Next time I'll make sarcastic remarks. 
<laughs> We're on next time already. And uh, kind of fast, so we can make a show, huh? Yes, ma'am. And plain rice. Oh, you like it fried? No. Plain rice and tea, too. Yes, ma'am. I'd like coffee right away, please. Yes, sir. So, you're not a town type, huh? Nebraska. Nebraska? That's somewhere out in California, isn't it? No, I think that's uh, Nevada you're thinking about this in California. So what have you been doing in New York? Well, mostly I've been walking by day and by night. It's a little monotonous, but it's healthy. When you sleep. I haven't got time for that. Who were the kids that kept you busy until 6.30? Huh? Oh, a dance group. Uh, they're working up a recital. Thought maybe I'd have an idea for costumes. Did you? Oh, sure. I'm a success. I got the job. My first move, I loaned the choreographer 75 cents. But I'll make a few bucks running up the costume. Is that what you do for a living? Little of this, little of that. The rest unemployment insurance. So, what do you do? I mean, uh, what'd you do in Nebraska? I was an attorney. Oh, is that what you're going to do here, practice law? Well, I haven't made any plans yet. I, uh, I've been too busy walking. Everything fine? Mm. Everything okay? Thank you. Fine one. It's from heaven. No, dip it in the bug juice first. Gittle, huh? Sounds uh, exotic. What is it? Italian? Eskimo? Jewish. Moscow? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's exotic. That's my stage name. My real one's too long for the marquees. Moskowitz. What? Dance. But you're giving it up. Giving it up? It's what I am. Dear God, I studied with Jose for years. Jose who? Are you kidding? Limon, the best. It's really important to you, isn't it? Well, if it isn't, I sure wasted a lot of 750s a week. So, um, what's it like in Nebraska? I've never been out of New York myself. From the Bronx to Manhattan to Brooklyn, this is your life, Gittle Moscow. I was going to Florida once. I had the money, even. Miami. Well, I'm so smart, I got married to this fella, and he went to Florida instead, and I you got too. divorced. You married? My wife's divorcing me back in Omaha. A lanceman. Huh? A buddy from the same country. How long did yours last? Twelve years. Big deal. What's the matter? She get a yen for another guy? No, she just got a yen to see the end of me. Look, uh, you really want to see a show? Not sure. Does it bother you talking about all this? Marriage, divorce, all that jazz? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just thinking about something else, like uh, how are we going to decide whether or not we really want to see a show? Cross examine this. You're the lawyer. Attorney, <laughs> please. It's more exotic. <laughs> Watch yourself. You've got to be a bat to find your way around this place. Some of my best friends are bats. I'm not entirely stable myself. So why didn't you listen? Wouldn't have made the slightest bit of difference. Do you know that over 60% of the accidents in this country occur in the home, not including ruptured marriages? Be safe, be homeless. Get run over in the street better. Now, what do you have, Jerry? Cold beer seltzer. What do you have? Warm milk. Warm milk? I may be too old for you. I think I'll have a sophisticated Coke. Now, Coke's got caffeine in it. I think I'll give you a beer. It's more relaxing. Don't be a nurse. I'm sorry. I spent 12 years being treated like a patient. I was worried about, coddled, nursed, humored. Your wife? A great little caretaker called Tess. I've been taken care of until I'm in shreds. A Coke. Leave the chips fall where they may. Okay, you said you don't sleep, so you won't sleep. Make it a beer. Look, let's start all over, Jerry. Now, on your own, whether you have Coke or beer. Warm milk. If I'm relaxing, there's no point in being casual about it. What kind of bed you got you don't sleep? I've got a cot that I pick up the Salvation Army for $8. Well, no wonder. Take a feel of that. Go ahead, take a feel. You know what I paid for the mattress alone? 59 bucks. That's one thing I'd never be without, the good bed. I mean, figure it out. You're in it a third of your life. You must lead a very straight-laced life. Okay, half. All the 
same. You get yourself a good bed, just stop walking so much, maybe. Yeah, but until I stop walking, I can't afford $59 just to make my bed bugs comfortable. It's a vicious circle. You got bed bugs? Yeah, among other things, yeah. Lawyer or no lawyer, you're not working, huh, Jerry? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Getting unstuck from a piece of fly paper can be very hard work. No, no. Look, you've told me why I'm drinking this. Now, why are you? I got an ulcer in the duodenum. Serious? I mean, uh, I thought ulcers in women went out with the vapors. Isn't that supposed to be a man's disease nowadays? <laughs> no, I got it. Which are you, by the way? Are you the old-fashioned type or the manly, same rules for me as for you type? Why? What's the difference? Well, it might influence whether I drink this and go or stay all night. You don't exactly lead up to things, do you? Who's Mr. America? Is that your ex? Oh, no. Wally wasn't around long enough to snap a picture. That's Larry, my partner. Somehow there's uh, less of you here. Whoa. Ulcers you put on weight. A diet, ye gods. You're supposed to eat six meals a day. The last hemorrhage I had, I put on 18 pounds. The last one? Oh, I hope it's the last. I got just so much blood. How many have you had? Two. Then when I never looked healthy in my life, they had to operate on me for something entirely different altogether. Appendicitis. <laughs> no kidding, I'm a physical wreck, practically. Your physique, wrecked though it may be. So, that's what's wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me, except, of course, our uh, problem. How we're going to make up our minds. About what? About my staying over. I appreciate the invitation, but I, uh, I don't think you ought to insist. I don't get it, Jerry. First, you can't even decide if you want to eat with me, and then the next minute, bing into bed. How come? Just testing. Like the old lady said, how do I know what I think until I hear what I say? Is that the way you decide everything in your head? <laughs> well, it's supposed to save a lot of false moves. Where do you decide things? That one, not in my head. <laughs> A couple of false moves might get you further. Well, let's not rush things. Let's examine what we'd be getting into. Who said yes yet? Oh, what is this, some new kind of line supposed to be putting me in the mood? You mean it's not? The only. <laughs> All right. We'll try a more conventional approach. A little soft music. That's something I've missed. You haven't got a radio, even? Well, it's better than not having a television set, which I haven't got either. Yeah, but everybody's got a radio. You can get a radio for 1995. Hey, listen, Jerry, are you broke? Why do you ask? Well, you're a long ways from home. You're not working. You know anybody here you can borrow from? Only you. How much do you need? You're a very generous girl, Gittle. You're too generous. You know, you can get bit feeding stray wolves like this. Oh, well, yeah, but if you're broke. You said that, not I. Last year I made $30,000. Uh, I got 18 bucks to last me through the month. What am I helping you for? Well, offhand, I'd say you're a born victim. What? Of yourself. Huh. I had the nerve to feel sorry for you. What's so terrible? You feel sorry for me? Sure. Kittle, how old are you? 29. Well, and stop talking like 28. You know, you have to start worrying about your own worries. Things aren't all that good for you. A little here, a little there, the rest unemployment insurance. Well, I got plans. What plans? Several. This flurry in me. We're working up a dance recital, and then I'm going to look for a cheap loft to fix up like a dance studio and rent out for classes. Oh, what are you so sore about? Because I had the nerve to feel sorry for you. Because I don't think I can afford you. I'm not in the market for a whole human being complete with weaknesses and confusion. What the who asked you? Who made an offer? I did. But I take it back. I'm neither ready nor able to be responsible for anything these days. Least of all, an ingenuous nitwit like you. That's why I'm sore. Disappointed. What's ingenuous mean? Smart? Dumb. Naive. Oh, for God's sake. I had a room of my own in the village at 16. What do you think? To play potsy? <laughs> be scared, be scared for your own reasons. So, uh, you're a woman of wide experience, huh? Well, wide is another story. Do you sleep with Mr. America? Larry, I told you, he's a dancer. 
I mean, we're very good friends and all that, but what do you think? I'm peculiar or something? Hey, are you? Am I what? Queer. Now you've gone too far. Brother, how long have you been on the wagon? A year. Where you been, in jail? Uh, you go have a cookie and calm down, and uh, then you better go. Go? Why, was that the wrong false move? No, Jerry. Oh, look, I got an ironclad rule. I wouldn't sleep with Christopher Columbus on the first date. What do you want me to be, promiscuous? Oh, besides, this, this routine you've been giving me, if you wanted to be turned down, you couldn't have planned it better. You're testing. How do you like that? And you know who you're testing? Not me. You want to find out how you feel? That's a make? Why should I hop in the hay with you? Cure for your health, the fellow I don't even know what's eating him? I tell you my whole life story, practically, and what do I hear out of you? No news at all. All right, the news is very sparse, but here it is. I had a job, a house, a marriage, and a life. They all went sour on me, so much for the past. Now, for the shining present, I live in a cell that costs $31 a month. The halls are full of garbage. I'll wake up gassed some morning if I don't throw myself off a bridge the night before. And I can't afford $19.95 for a radio. That 30 grand last year, you said that to show off? I said it because I didn't want to take candy from a baby. Look, I came east with $500. I don't know how long it has to last me. I'm trying to live on $350 a day. But you spent $16.80 on me tonight. I splurged. It's my birthday. Your birthday? Spent more than 16.80. I bought myself a dollar cigar. You had to buy yourself a present on your own birthday. So why didn't you tell me, Jerry? Why? Would you like to have given me one? Sure. Thanks, but uh, I'm not hinting for handouts from uh, lovable crackpot waifs. Just don't tell a fella go when you've been signaling come all night. That's not ladylike. What do you mean you haven't been hinting for handouts? What? It's what you've been doing all night. All those hints, unhappy bedbugs broke. Unhappy bedbugs? Unhappy bedbugs. Like this minute, if I don't sleep with you, they'll find you dead. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Who said that? You did. Oh, with the garbage or uh, off a bridge, you're so lonely. That's the last thing you said to me. Well, that might have been a campaign oratory, you know, an approach. But I certainly haven't been doing that all night long. The first thing you said to me was help me on the telephone, right? No, no. I said I wouldn't say that. Oh, I... come on. You said help me. I said sure. I'm not complaining, but uh, what do you call me? Names? You want it both ways? Hey, I say something that hurts your feelings. I was griped, you know. I wanted to hit back. It's natural. No, no. Uh, it's just that you're absolutely right. The point you made. What point? That I asked for handouts. I do, you know. I never saw it before, but it uh, happened tonight, right under my very nose. And if I do... Oh, so where are you going now? Back to solitary. There I go again. So don't go. Ye gods, if you hate that joint of yours so much you don't want to go back there on your birthday, stay over. I got a couch in the back room. You take the bed. Stay? Sure. With a good night's sleep, you'll feel better in the morning. Okay? Settled. Hey, you mind my sheets? I put them on clean yesterday and I had a bath. Of course not. Get a lonely uh... Lonely what? But well, you got a lousy bed. Tomorrow you get some kerosene and see where they come out of the wall. Gittle, you're a very sweet girl. Well, uh, you're a very sweet girl, too. The John's right over there. And with a good night's sleep, you'll feel, feel better. better in the morning. Sure. Already. Look, after what we talked about, about handouts, you know, don't you think it's sort of weak of me? What, on your birthday? Hello, pardon me.
Skittle, should I stay, really? Oh, well, look, don't nudge me. You want to stay? So stay. Happy birthday.
About that ice box, you really shouldn't have given it to that jerk for nothing. Huh? You know, you keep on like that, you're going to give away everything hey, you... Hey, Jerry! Do. Are you okay? I'm fine. Tried a new bridge to Queensboro. It'll... I walked out on you. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. What made you change your ironclad rule? Huh? Oh, I couldn't resist your dopey hat. Sure, it was just that, not something else like uh, charity, for instance. You know, I told you once I was smothered in charity, I wouldn't want that to happen again. Is that why you took off? Yeah, partly. Yeah. Well, I was worried about you, and I called two, three times, but no answer. I walked out on you, and you still called two, three times? Two times. It'll... It'll, you need taken care of. You don't look out for yourself. If you did, you'd object more. Object to what? Right now, this very minute. Why aren't you taking my head off about the time? Why? What time is it? It's after five. Takes practice. Go ahead. Go ahead what? Object. Holler. Who do I think I am calling you at this hour of the night and waking you up? You resent it? Say so. What are you hollering at me for? For your own good. Well, I don't like to holler at people. It makes me nervous. Besides, I'm glad you phoned. Why? What makes you so dumb? I was worried about you. That's better. I told you, all you need is practice. Go ahead. Ah, who's practicing? What do you think, I'm nuts? You know what time it is. Is this why you call me up after five in the morning to practice hollering? No. I called to tell you that you're a wonderful girl and not to give anything else away until I see you. Huh? It seems I am on the market for a whole human being after all. Your whole human being, anyway. Complete with ulcers, no appendix and all. Oh, that must be some bridge, that Queensboro. <laughs> Yeah, the view was great. And that uh, birthday candle you lit under me cast a light all the way back to Omaha. Omaha, Nevada. Oh, you mean where you got smothered with charity? <laughs> Taken over. Just swallowed up till I didn't have a friend or an ashtray to call my own. You know, no matter how lovingly it's done, it still isn't calculated to make a man feel, no well, manly, let's say. Look, Jerry, just so I'll understand all this stuff, uh, talk down to me a little bit, huh? Like ABC, okay? Okay. I met Tess my last year in college. Her father, Lucius, the blowhard of all time, was so rich that he didn't care that I wasn't. Now, is that clear so far? Yeah, yeah, go on. Okay. Between them, they took me over, Tess and Lucius. A law scholarship was wangled for me. I was accepted into the family law firm. Lucius even built the house that Tess and I lived in when we were married. A very grand house. A very plush kennel for an unpedigreed pup. And there you are. Well, so, uh, what'd you see when you looked back with the candle? I saw that I had asked for it. It wasn't done to me. I could have hollered stop any time or walked out, but I didn't do it. Half of my life has been a handout that I asked for. Seeing that, I finally walked out on one tonight from you. It just uh, wasn't a good enough beginning for us. You know something, Jerry? A person could get pretty confused talking to you. Why don't you have breakfast with me and I'll try and unconfuse you, will you? Sure, only I'm having the tooth pulled out at nine, so it'll have to be after. And, uh, well, I'll probably be spitting a lot of blood, so... Well, I mean, uh, we won't be able to do anything. <laughs> Why don't I come over and go to the dentist with you, all right? <laughs> because I want to. I'll see you in a little while. Hey, what do you do when a tooth bleeds? Why, you got one? I'm talking about you. Huh? Oh, well, yeah, let it bleed. It dries up. Why? Never mind. It'll... Yeah. Is he pretty good, this uh, Dr. Kruger? It's a cotton pusher. He drills, pushes in some cotton, five bucks, come back next week, next week. More cotton, five bucks, come back next week. You go on like that for a while till you get mad. Then first he fills the tooth. But why do you come all the way up to the Bronx to see him? He's mama's dentist, too. Who should I go to? Wouldn't hurt, huh? Hi. Come on in, Mr. Molinari. 
The lady, you want to go in ahead of me? I'm not in any hurry. I'm in no hurry either, thanks. Oh. Jerry, this lousy tooth hasn't been bothering me for two days now. It's been through a lot with me, so why don't I just hold on to it, huh? Let's go. French Street in the village. for an ice bag, a taxi downtown. I'm costing you a fortune. Well, I'm about to start making a fortune, so it's all right. How? You gonna go back to that bridge and hold somebody up? No, no, no. I see a man about a job, Frank Taubman, big wheel in law circles. When? As soon as I get you bedded down. To the ice bag. Temporarily. Such a square. How come you didn't get me a box of candy in a red satin hot box? <laughs> I looked. They don't have them till Valentine's Day. No, I'll wait. All right, get You wait. I had to put these in some water. Uh, what these cost you? I hope you got the job with that big wheel. I'll go to work for him tomorrow. Oh, you're going to be a lawyer again, huh, Jerry? No, I can't be a lawyer in New York State until I pass the bar exam. I'm uh, going to do briefs for him. What's that mean? Researching a case for precedent. When one kook sues another kook and the judge can't decide which kook is kookier, they go back to the case of two other kooks in another court in 1890. Come on inside, huh? I like it better without sleeves. Hey, when yours, I'll leave off the sleeves. Oh, is it fun doing briefs? Pays well. If we're going to be two halves of an apple, you and I, we can use them. <clears throat> Somebody putting a bite on you, Jerry. No, oh, but girls are expensive. But with flowers and ice bags. How's your tooth? Fine. And uh, renting lofts for them to dance in. Oh, you're renting me a loft already. Why not? Kendall, I want you to use me. Will you stop walking up and down? I'm nervous. So am I. But all this walking around isn't helping us, honey. I was just waiting to be stopped. That's all. You'll open the wind. It wouldn't smell. You don't mind if I try one right now, do you? Help yourself. If you want my candid opinion, this is an A1 loft. Well, this is the first one that's bigger than a closet and smaller than a bowling alley. The floor's got to be sanded down to dance but otherwise perfect. Mr. Jacoby. Yes? What will you do to put the place in condition? I wouldn't lift a finger. Sixty dollars a month, three months in advance. If you want something done, do. Sixty dollars a month? For a place that hasn't got a john in it even? A who? A bathroom. A toilet. One flight down, the end of the hall, clean paper towels. See, what do you want to do, live here? You want a toilet? This is not an apartment. 
Nobody lives here. I don't rent out to beatniks. Well, you get in an uproar. I want to make a dance studio out of it, that's all. Rent it out a few days a week for classes. Kids? Well, possibly, yes. Why? You're going to have kids? I want a statement. Anything they damage, you'll pay. Oh, what could they damage? It's so beautiful here. They'll find. My dear young people, I've got a common business downstairs. Why don't you discuss amongst yourselves, come to a decision? If you want to take it, fine. If not, go and go out. But one way or the other. You kindly bring me down the key. Thank you. Darn it. Sixteen bucks a month. Now, don't you get in an uproar. You'll wake up your ulcers. Honey, look, I've dragged it to over a hundred lofts in the past five weeks. Now, you know this is but it. Jerry, sixty dollars. Yeah, but I make more than twice that in a week. So... I'm supposed to be a leech? Do me a favor, will you? Be a leech. Let's look around for some more lawyers. Honey, I can't. Frank Taubman wants to see me at 5 o'clock. How come? You think you're going to get canned? You just won't be happy until you're supporting me, will you? Don't be such a wise guy. Look, I'll look around for some more lawyers, and you go see what's with Taubman, and then tonight at dinner we'll talk it over nice and calm, okay? Okay. I'll accept the nice and calm part. My dear young man, in this loft, nobody lives. Well, that should do it. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. You know, it's ridiculous, a man of your ability, law clerking. Why don't you take the New York State bar exams? Well, that'd be quite a cram job. I haven't been to school for a long time. You can bypass all that, be admitted to the bar on motion. I'd be glad to sponsor you. Well, that's extremely kind of you. You'd need affidavits from prominent Nebraska attorneys. But I'm sure the head of your old firm out there can manage it for you. If I could manage to ask him. He's about to become my ex-father-in-law. Will do you think it over? We'd like very much to have you. Uh, just to be sorted, how much? I'm prepared to offer you 10000 a year. Well, I'm prepared not to accept that. If I'm useful enough to be around here full time, I should be worth uh, 12 5 And since it would take 14 to nail me down, I think we should start talking in the neighborhood of 15. Let's go over to St. Regis and have a couple of drinks. Settle down to some serious haggling. I think it's only fair to warn you. After a couple of drinks, my price goes up. That's funny. Mine goes down. <laughs> Baby, you just got a Don't move. Hey, that smells good. Who's inside? Ah, chicken. A salad on the table and potatoes and wine on the ice. I got a bargain, 69 cents a bottle. Must have been getting kind of old. <laughs> it's so funny. You are in. Well, I wanted to tell you, you got a... Hey, walk. curtains. Yes. Yeah. You don't think I come here just to see you? <laughs> Wait a second. Better with candles. Cozy, huh? It's just wonderful. You're turning this into the show place of the nation. So, what's in the bag? Everything's in the bag. You know that uh, wire stuff you wanted? Yeah. Brillo? Mm -hmm. Dessert. Soya cake. Salt-free, butter-free, taste-free. <laughs> a present. Me to you. Aw, Jerry. I can't wait to see what's in it. What's in it? <laughs> So she uh, opens this package from her lover, thinking that it's candy, but it's not candy. It's this fabulous diamond that he's torn from the eye of this idol, and she lets out this unearthly shriek. A cake of soap? What kind of present is a cake of soap? I need a bath. Don't you dare take a bath with that. That's Chanel number five, five dollars a copy. We're going to eat that spoonful by spoonful. You know, sometimes I think the nutty one is too, some some of us think I am is you. <laughs> no, five dollars we're not going to eat. Oh, yes, we are. Speaking of feasts, uh, how's your stomach? Fine. I took some banthine and it went away. Not all of it. You think I'm too fat? Good heavens, no. You think I'm too skinny? I think you're a sacred vessel of womanhood. Sexy as all get out, huh? Well put. Do you think I'm too sexy? I mean, oversexed? Well, I think you're kind of a uh, mixed-up vessel. Calmly considered, I'd say your bottom was tops. Oh, some vessel. I sound like a shipwreck.
chicken will get blown. And anyway, I started to tell you five times you're going to get a long-distance call. From whom? Your wife. I talked to her. She asked the operator. At first, I felt kind of funny, you know? But then I thought, the woman's been married to him for years and years. Why shouldn't she call him up and say, hello, how are you, what's new? So I relaxed and went to look at the chicken like now. When did she call? Two, three times. Said she'd try again about eight. <laughs> Ye God, she sure must be loaded. I only made one long distance call in my whole life. Tallahassee it was, Florida, right after we were married. Wally had a job there. He said he had a job, but it was really a redhead. But I didn't drop dead when I found out. I called him up. I don't want to talk to Tess. So don't. I got the bill. That's when I dropped dead. I just won't answer the phone. That's the best way. You want to get the wine? I certainly do. I've got something for us to celebrate. What did I tell you about my session with Frank Tobin? matter, honey. But I said I wouldn't answer the phone. It's all finished. Dead and buried. I wanted to stay that way. Now, let's talk about something more pleasant. Did you find a loft you like better than Jacoby's? That's pleasant? No. Good. And we'll quench the deal tomorrow morning. I'll get a loft when I get a job. I hear Shraft is putting on girls. I'm going to go by there tomorrow. Shrafts? You mean waiting on table? Well, whatever they got. I worked the candy counter there last year. I put on seven pounds. They got very good candy. Kittle, that's nonsense. What do you got against Shrafts? I'm just a guess they're having you. Now, that's final. No Shrafts. Prosecution rests. Hey, you know, this chicken is fabulous. What makes it taste like gin? Gin. Fabulous. I mean, you. You can cook, you can sew. You... Just a minute. What are you doing eating French fried potatoes? You know they're not supposed to be good for you. How many have you had? Three. That's three too many. All right. You may have one more. Instead, I've been reading up on ulcers. Let's stick to what you can eat, huh? Certainly. You know, I was just thinking, I've forgotten her voice. How'd she sound? What do you mean, how'd she sound? Lovely. She sounded lovely. You want to hear how she sounds? Talk to her. You know, I don't understand you. Why do you want me to talk to her? I'm with you in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, him and her. Why let the snake in? We had enough trouble getting rid of the bed bugs. All right, Jerry. We're on the subject of bugs. Something's bugging me. It's all dead and buried, you said. Fine. With me and Wally, it's all dead and buried, too. But if he called right now, I'd make a face, I'd think, who needs it, and I'd talk to him. It's another human being. Maybe they're sick, maybe they need something. At least you find out why they're calling. Tess doesn't need anything from me. She never did. Wally doesn't mean enough to me not to talk to him. That's you and Wally. I don't have to operate on the same wavelength, do I? No. So let's talk about the loft. Honey, look. What I'm saying is if you're a dancer, it's time you did something about it. So we'll get you the loft tomorrow. Okay? I'll get the coffee. Honey, I can afford it, honestly. You're getting coffee for Fort Knox and you don't know it. Tobin wants to take me on full time. Oh, gee, Jerry, that's great. 
Oh, you're going to be a lawyer again in court, like you said you loved, huh? Well, I can't do that unless I accept a handful of favors from my ex-father-in-law, which strikes me as a return to an old and bad habit. Or unless I take the New York State bar exam, which strikes me as uh, nervous-making. Oh, you'd knock him dead. What makes you think so? I got my impressions. I don't even know the traffic laws in this state, and I'm a little old to be going back to school. Oh, every day you're reading the paper, some grandma going to NYU, 11 grandchildren. I look like somebody's grandma? We begin with my lending you a hand, and we end up with you putting me through college. No, I don't need a hand, I'll make out. You better take the exam sometime, no? I'm in no particular hurry. What are you, on vacation here? You're in no particular hurry? Look, all I meant was... Now, 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 stop it. You don't even know what you're fighting about. Look, you see this? That's Clevenger. Practice Manual, State of New York. What I don't know would fill that book and a whole library besides. Oh, Jerry, you know what I think you got too much of? A lack of confidence. I mean, ye gods, if you were such a popular lawyer in Nevada, what's the difference? Nebraska, dear, about a thousand miles. No, no, I'm talking serious. You know you smell better than Chanel number How five. How come you were so popular there? I shot in the mid-70s. Shot what? Birdies. Shooting birds made you popular? Mm-hmm. Damn you. Don't answer that phone. Yeah, hello? Hi, Kettle, it's me. Put it down. It's Larry. So why didn't you call me sooner? I just got back. Well, what'd they say at the Y? $625. How much? $625. What the hell are we going to do? Oh, I don't know, but I can't talk about it now in the middle of dinner. Maybe we can hold it in the loft, huh? No, I can't swing the loft yet, but I can't go into all that now. What did that dame do to you? Loved me. Married me. And walked out on you, she's such a doll. I gave her plenty of reason. It was the best thing she could have done for both of us. Well, if everything was so fine and dandy, how come you left Nebraska? At least there you could have worked. I stayed around for a while. Everything seemed okay at first. I was busy. Tess picked up her old life. She got herself a fella. Some guy that's been in love with her since they were kids, they'll probably get married. Is that what bugged you? No, I was all for it in my head, but... But it bugged you, huh? Well, I get bumping into them, I... Oh, Jill, when you've been married to somebody for 12 years, lived together for 12 years, you don't just break it up. You can't just forget it like it was... Well, anyway, I cut out, ran. So stop running. It's the Atlantic Ocean already. I'm not running anymore. Now, don't you see, if you can't talk to her on the phone, you're running. Look, just ask me. Don't try to help me. Ask me to, and maybe I will if it's so important to you. It's important to you. I don't want to. Do you want me to, yes or no? No. Do you want me to take the bar exam? No. What do you want of me? Not a damn thing. All right, now let's stop that. You know smoking's bad for your stomach. I'll keep track of my own stomach. We've been together almost 30 years. We get by. But you don't get by. You just tell lies to yourself. Well, you get by, sure. From day to day, job to job, man to man, but nothing ever sticks. They all take off for Tallahassee. Did you pay his train fare? He was broke. <laughs> My God, she did. You pay the freight and every bum crawls aboard for the free ride. And you never know why the ride's over, do you? Well, I'll tell you why. Because every time a man offers you a hand, you put a donation in it. You might as well spit in it. So they just use you and walk away. That's not a joke anymore. Giddle, you're not a kid anymore. And you're all alone. Who cares what happens to you except me? Don't spit in my hand, Gittle. Tess didn't need it, but you do. You make one claim. Just make one real claim on a man, he might surprise you. 
You get my point? Sure. Gee, you're a terrific lawyer, Jerry. How come you're so bashful? Didn't you understand one word I said? Oh, sure. And if I was a jury, I'd send me up for five years. No kidding. I'm not kidding. Gittle needs someone. Let go. Needs someone. Oh, what? Let me go or I'll yell. No, you won't. Help! Lunatic. Somebody will come. Nobody will come. It's New York. Let me go. I'm going to be all black and blue, you big ape. I ought to get out of here before you slug me. Slug you? Is that what you've learned to expect from your romances? I expect the worst when it comes to men. I expect the worst. Why don't you pick up the phone if you're so strong? Do you want me to? Sure, I want you to. I don't know where I stand. I can scream my head off and nobody comes. Who can I count on besides me? Me, Gittle. Yeah, you know, and you all fall in a big hole someplace in Nevada. Yes, hello? Mr. Jerry Ryan, please. Speaking, operator. I have a long-distance call for you from Omaha. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Tess. Jerry, do you know how many times I've tried to get you? Yes, I know. The only thing I don't know is why. Why? Well, we have a lot to talk about. The divorce. There's what? nothing to talk about. The divorce comes up on the calendar, and that's that. I worry about Well, you. stop worrying about me. I've got a girl, I've got a job, and I'm just fine. I'm glad, Jerry. But don't be angry. We can still be friends. I don't want to be friends with you, Tess. Will you get out of my life? I want to forget you. Well, I can't forget you. I'm sorry, Tess. <laughs> I try, but I can't. Oh. Don't cry, Tess, please. Tess, will you please stop crying? <laughs> It's not her. I'm not upset about her. It's the dance. No, no, darling. Now, Larry says the Y, what, 625 bucks for work You're the time. one that's running now. It is her. No, it's the Y. That's why we were going to put on the recital. Now, why should Stop I go it. get a lousy law? Stop it. Honey, help me. What? Give me something to hang on to. Use me for something, even if it's only a lousy loft. I'm scared, too. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Why should I stick my neck out? Because I am. We're both staking out new claims. It is a beginning. Only meet me halfway. Like with the loft, huh? Like with the loft. Okay. Okay, put out the damn light, will you? behind, but otherwise I got no complaints. So how about coming over for a little party Friday night, huh? Friday? I'll have to check with Jerry, see what he's got in mind first. I'd like to know, too. 
What kind of remark is that you'd like to know, too? Do me something. It's been a long time with you and him. It has not been so long. With Wally, you knew where you were in 15 minutes. Oh, well, Wally was different. What about Max? Which Max? Which Max? The Max from Grossinger. Look, I ever know anybody buy me a loft before where I made 24 bucks this month and Monday Molly's moving in a new class? Well, Seymour always acted nice. Oh, he used to buy me a Mr. Goodbar. He still owes me 70 bucks I'll never see. The fact is, Sophie, till I met Jerry, I was a born victim. So why can't he be a human being? Huh? Take him home. Have him meet your mother. You think I'm crazy? Take him home to meet Mama. He'll leave New York in a balloon. Oh, the landlady's union is a no-good oh, union. Is a union from the bosses. Here's your blood money. My blood. Twelve bucks, right? This pays you up till the tenth. Yeah. Do you need a loan, Tony? No. No, not if I have to pay it back. I'm back. I'll go on about Jerry. Listen, you don't understand about Jerry. For instance, he plays golf. I haven't known anybody played golf. Big deal. Pin a medal oh, on Oh, what him. do you know? Anybody's not a painter by you is a nothing. All right, so don't let's fight, huh? You're working, huh? Yeah, I'm working at my recital. Well, I'm trying to. It's kind of hard to get going again after so long, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'll take up golf instead. Better you should take up matrimony. Look, what's the rush, Sophie? His divorce papers haven't come through yet. What should he be, a bigamist? Has he ever discussed the subject? No, not yet. Why not? Sophie, you're getting me mad. Why? For what? Because you're pestering me, that's why. Because I'm your friend. Well, so don't be such a friend. Be an enemy and quit pestering me. Taubman Associates. Hi, Gittle Mosca. Could I talk to Mr. Ryan? He's on another call, Miss Mosca. Oh, well, I got nothing to do, so why don't I hold on, huh? He's talking to Omaha, Nebraska, so it may be quite a while. Oh, well. Well, maybe I won't wait. A long-distance call to Omaha could go on for a long time.
Diallo. Hello, darling. Oh, hiya, Jerry. I was just leaving. I heard a rumor that you had called me. Yeah. Uh, you run long distance to Omaha, the operator said. Uh, it wasn't important. Just Sophie and Oscar, they're having a thing Friday night, and I didn't know if you'd want to go. Ooh. Tobin's having a thing Friday night, too. How about going to that with me? No, you'll go on to yours, and uh, I'll go to Sophie and Oscar's. We'll both have a good time. I mean, we don't have to be glued. What's the matter, honey? Nothing. I'm in a hurry, that's all. Are you meeting me for a cup of coffee? No, I can't meet you for a cup of anything. Why not? Well, because uh, I have to walk down three flights of stairs and across the square and catch a bus and be in Larry's in half an hour. So I'll talk to you later. Hi, I thought you had a big fancy shindig tonight. No, I blew it. I thought I surprised my girl. Skittle isn't here. They left about an hour ago. They? Mm -hmm. Sure. A fella. A guest. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I mean, she's a single girl. She's got a right to see people, hasn't she? Well, of course. Sophie, tell me something. Why are you being so unpleasant? You don't mind my asking you, do you? No. I don't mind. I'm a friend of Gittles. So am I. I don't think so. Oh, do me something. Anytime I find I'm wrong, I'll be glad to apologize. Well, thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Dr. Kurtzman, there. Who's calling, please? I'm calling. Who are you? I mean, are you really there? Are you one of those answering nuisances? Yes, this is the service. Is it important? Yeah, it's an emergency. Who's calling? Gittle Mosca. Will you tell him, please? I'm very sick. What's your number, please? Canal 6 2098. I'll have the doctor call you. Jerry. 
you have a good time at your party? Not as good as you. Are you drunk, at least? Yeah, I had a couple. I had this terrible thirst all night, you know, and I didn't stop to think. Or think to stop. Who were you with? Hmm? Uh, Jake. He's a very mo modern type painter. Is that why you kissed him goodnight? Because you're a patroness of the arts? Where were you? Where I've been all week. One jump behind you. I didn't kiss him. He kissed me. Didn't you go to Frank Taubman's? Light the gas, will you, honey? I'm awful cold. You've drunk enough. It's water. Matter you don't trust me. So uh, after you left Sophie's with this uh, wrestler, where did you go? You've been one jump behind me. You probably know anyway. His place. For over two hours? Doing what? Looking at his modern type paintings? <laughs> So what do you see, a fortune? Yours, and I don't like it. Oh, ye God, so I had about six drinks. What, am I ruined for life? I'm not talking about anything so wholesome as getting drunk. Did you go to bed with him? You feel like crying, Jerry. I feel like crying. You did, didn't you? Poor Jerry. Did you go to bed with him? Oh, so what if I did? Is it the end of the world? Why? Why? Oh, what's it matter? What's it matter? Do you really care so little about me? Oh, Jerry. About yourself? Myself, I got better things to worry. Why did you want to? I don't know why. Besides, who said I did? You're going to drive me to drink. Why did you go home with him? I used to go with Jake two, three years ago. Well, tonight I had a couple of drinks. It was a case of old Lang Syne, you know? Why did you drink? Oh, what am I? I'm getting analyzed. It's supposed to be at Taubman's. Open it up. I asked you to go. Well, who wants to go there? A bunch of stuffed shirts. Why did you go home with him? I got plastered. I said so. What do you want? A written confession? Don't walk away from me. I'm talking to you. So go ahead and talk. Lawyers, boy. Look. You don't just get plastered and flush us down the drain for no reason at all. What did I do? What's your complaint? Who's complaining? You are. Don't you think I have a right to? Don't get off the subject. I'm on the subject. You and me. That's never been the subject, Jerry. I'm talking about what did I do that pushed you home with, uh, what's his name, Jerk. Jay! Jerk. Because you may be pushing me home. Is that what you're aiming to do? Get rid of me so you can try anything in pants in New York that you may have overlooked? Uh, oh, let me alone. I got a headache. Okay. We'll talk it out in the morning. When you're on your feet and in your right mind. Yes, Jerry. What? You don't like me anymore? I hate you. Is that passionate enough? Come on, turn over. But I can do it. Well, don't, will you? It's a big favor. You don't hate me. You just feel sorry for me. What makes you think you're so pathetic? Come on, pull. You ever saw me dancing around that loft, you'd think I was pathetic. Just sit there and wait for ideas to come like I'm marooned or something. You know what, Jerry? I'm not a dancer at all. Is that why you got loaded? If I fix some hot milk, will you drink it to settle your stomach? We always talk about my stomach. I got no other charms. 
Michelle. Get away from me. I'll do it. And I don't want your lousy favor. Is that how you're going to sleep it off? Shall I stay or go? Go. Shall I leave the gas on? Yes. Do you need me for anything? Of course not. Jerry? Jerry? What? What are you still here for? I can't put it off till morning. I'm at a dead end here. I don't want to go on doing briefs. I want to be back in a courtroom. Why don't you take the bar exam? I'm scared. I don't know how good I am away from Lucius. What else can you do? Go back where I am a member of the bar. Well, your wife isn't going to marry that other fellow, huh? Yeah. Well, you might have another chance. Well, what chance have I got here? Go on. Answer the phone. I don't want to talk to anybody. Let it ring. Who is it this late? Your well, friend? Who it is? So, you're going to go back or not? Well, why not? What's so great about here? Beating my head against the bar exam, Jake, kicks in the belly, quicksand. So what do you think I'm up to my neck in? Not quicksand. All right. And tell me, you've had something sticking in your throat all week. Can't you spit it out? Or is it easier to hop in the hay with the first gorilla you meet? How can you treat yourself like a rag that any bum can wipe his hands on? Okay, when? When what? When are you going? Don't try to rush me off to Tallahassee. I don't turn loose so easily. Well, I got my own plans to make, you know. I'll probably hook up with Jake again. It's got a lot to give a girl, if you know what I mean. You'd be surprised. That's not all I mean to you. Now stop lying. Tell the truth for once. If stomach bothers you, why don't you go to the doctor? He tells me don't have emotions. Is it bad? Did I hurt you? Sure you hurt me. What do you think, my head made of tin? He didn't say you're sorry. Well, you had it coming, didn't you? Sure. I'm sorry. See, see, I told you you'd slug me and you finally did it. Well, if it makes you so happy, I'll be glad to oblige every hour. Who's happy? Three. What a smack. So, you're not going back. The smack didn't uh, erase anything. Get a look. I don't know which way to turn. Where we are, you and I, that makes a difference. Tell me, what made tonight happen?
Okay, all right, Jerry. It's not just one thing, you know. You're going to Talbans, that's part of it. Why didn't you want to go with me? Because I wouldn't have fitted in with them or maybe your other friends. They're too classy for me. Now, what's the sense, kid? Oh, it's a nonsense. There's no place I'd ever go that I couldn't take you. Like a chip on your shoulder, you take me. Oh, look, I'm... I'm sort of a slob. You think I don't know? You're a beautiful, beautiful girl. My neck is too long. Besides, that's not the point. The point is, I'm not her. She would have fitted in. Now, that's really the subject, Jerry. Not you and me, you and her. And that's been the subject since the first minute we met. What's Jake? A piece of penny candy. If you got a penny, you're near a machine, you put it in. If not, not. But her. It's like when I was a kid. We used to nick in the vestibule. She's inside you. And I'm always outside in the vestibule. Everything you did here was to prove something to her. To you, to myself. To her. With her, you couldn't stand on your own two feet, so with me you will. Only I gotta stand on them too. You'll show her. With her, you took handouts, so with me you'll give handouts. Lofts, presents. Never mind do I want them or not, you'll show her. When you're blue even, I don't have to worry what I did wrong. She called, or she didn't call, she wrote a letter, or she didn't write a letter. It's always her. Okay. So then you say, need you. I need you. Well, who says these things in black and white? You care about somebody, you don't make them ask. Like a bill that's gotta be paid. What kind of giving is that? So when he asked me to hand myself over on a, on a platter. Oh, what do you hand over, Jerry? What will I get? Jake, I pay a penny, I get a penny candy. And you, you're a big ten buck box. And all I'll get is the cellophane. You shortchange people, Jerry. You make it look like you're giving, but you don't. That's what I did. It's what I did with her, too. I'm not talking about her. Now, you see, that's exactly what I mean. What you're doing now? No, it's true. It's true. Half of me hasn't even been in this town. So, I tried Jake. Of course. So, we're both flops. No. Not both of us. Not you. All these months I've tried to make you over so that you'd be more like me, like everyone, I guess. Stingy, holding back, guarding what we have because we've got so little. Everything you get, you give back double. Now, you're not a flop. You're a gift, infant. Underneath that beautiful face, there's a street brawler. But underneath that, there's someone that no one, nothing has ever dirtied. The way people were meant to be. That's what you are. I tried to persuade you that I'd given you a great gift, myself. Only half of that was a fraud, too. Put you in bed with bums like Jake. Like me. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I love your long neck.
My God, why didn't you tell me, you beautiful girl? Who's your doctor? It was him calling. Kurtzman, it's in the book. That's why I was at Jake's for so long. No other reason. I was sick. I didn't want you to know. Infant, idiot, man. Don't hate me, Jerry. I'm so ashamed. Shut up. You don't want to take me. I didn't want you to know. I didn't want to trap you. Trap me? Oh, but I'm so scared. Don't leave me. Just take it easy. Right here, nobody's leaving. <laughs> Was taking hold. Such a young fellow to be a doctor. His old lady must feel like a million dollars. I must caution you to carefully study your syllabus to familiarize yourself with all of the provisions of the statute of frauds and to be especially aware of each of the exceptions and rules which may act to take an agreement outside the statute. All right, that's where we'll stop for today. We'll review the 1951 exam tomorrow. Have your questions ready. Sorry, Molly, I couldn't help it. It's not that you're so late. It's who I'm with. <laughs> the grand ballroom is all yours. I'll be back Wednesday, on time. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I got a check for Gil. Oh, good. How's she doing? She's fine. Why don't you give her a ring or stop by? They broke a window already, those little monsters. And twice the turret was stopped up with popsicle sticks. I told you they would do damage, and they done damage. Well, that just proves one thing to me. You're a man of vision, Mr. Jacobus. You said it. Hey, come back! Sixty dollars a month rent, and six thousand dollars a month aggravation. Oy. Oh, she's much better, thank you. Would you like to stop in and say hello? Hey, you, Giddle. Hi, honey. Hey, you big dope. <laughs> I sure hope you're hungry, honey. I'm going to have to rush you. I have to be back at the office by 1.30. Well, that was two minutes ago. You mean if I hurry up, I'll be late? Leave a sandwich by the bed. You wouldn't have to break your neck to get back here for ten minutes. I told you that a hundred times already. I don't feed my girl sandwiches. I told you that a hundred and one times already. Now. Any other complaints? I'm just complaining. I'm just being polite. Well, how did your morning go? So-so. Just been lying there, huh? No, I almost got up to go to John by myself. Yeah, that'll be the day. Mm, being all the news reels. I waited till Sophie came over. Jerry? Yeah? I'll try to solo flight to the John tomorrow. I'm still a little wobbly, you know? Well, what do you expect the first time out? To climb Mount Everest? Is that what they go up there for? <laughs> You know where I'd like to be this minute? In bed, otherwise you'd be out of it. Central Park. In the grass. I don't get too much use out of Central Park, you know? Especially on a day like this. I mean, spring isn't even here yet, and spring is here. Well, you get yourself back up on your beautiful legs by Friday, and I'll take you to Central Park. Why? What's Friday? The bar exam's over. That's what's Friday. Is that a date? Well, one thing. I should be glad when that bar exam is over. Maybe you'll stop running long enough to say hello. Hello. Now, maybe you'll stop stalling long enough to say it's a date. You and that doctor. Miss Mosca, have you dangled yet? Have I dangled it? What kind of language is that? 
my feet over the side of the bed. I feel weak, like a cracked egg. Ooh, that reminds me. Maybe this will give you strength. For Molly. Uh, well, better be careful. Pretty soon you'll be after me for my money. Well, what else would I be after you for, of late? So when have you got time? Now? After the battle, daughter. Steak. 3.30 Friday and any time thereafter. Any time thereafter for how long? You say something? I said I love you. Well, when you have something like that to say, girl, speak up. Don't bumble. All right, I'll holler it. But don't worry, not too often. Maybe two times a week, that's all. Don't you worry. You can't say it too often for me. Now, if you'll stop talking for a minute, blabbermouth, maybe I can get your lunch ready. Did you eat already? How about time? I'll grab a sandwich and eat it at the office. What do you mean you'll grab a sandwich and eat at the office? What do you want, a nervous breakdown? You're knocking yourself out, Jerry. Working, studying, running like Western Union. Waiting on me, hand and foot. I'm enjoying it, and you know it. So why don't you stop talking like an idiot, eat your steak, and get well. I'm not just trying to take advantage, honest. You ask me what it is, is. I'm scared. Scared of what, honey? Well, I'm used to you staying here. There's stuff all around, your neckties all over the place. I get out of bed, your neckties go back to your place. So maybe that's why I stay here planted like a potato. Sure improves your character being in love, huh? Well, there's no sense just talking about it. What are you doing? Writing a letter to my landlord. Telling him I'm moving out. You have to get another tenant. Why didn't you tell me you had a thing about ties? I've got a lot more I could move over. You should have done this weeks ago. It's not thinking, I guess. Sincerely, Jerry Bryant. Now, I'll just mail this. Get him. Stay there. <laughs> Honey, that was wonderful. Yeah, I'm a living doll, like always. But I've never been a lousy blackmailer. And I'm not going to be one now. Not even to get you. Go there. Sincerely, you are skittle monk. Listen, I like being here. I like my neckties being here. This is the way I want it. Have you got that through your head? Have you? Yeah. Good. Now, is it safe for me to go back to work? Because if I don't, I'll get canned. I won't be able to afford even a non-rusty girl. You lie down soon, but not too soon. Chew your nice cold steak thoroughly before swallowing. Take your medicine, button up your overcoat. You belong to me.
Mr. Appleton's waiting for you in the library half an hour now. Wait, Mr. Ryan. I have a message for you. You're to call... Jerry! Up. Old man Appleton's beginning to drum on the desk. Sorry, Frank. Mr. Ryan, your wife's been trying to get you all morning. You're to call Omaha Operator 12. Take it down, Jerry. I'll pacify old Appleton. Go on, use my office. Put the call through, Jesse. I'm sorry you had so much trouble in reaching me. How does it feel to be free, Jerry? How does it feel to be what? Divorced. Because we are. When did that happen? Yesterday. So, uh... We're not related anymore. What about those pots? You want them packed separately? Separately from what? Separately from the dishes. I don't know. Sure. Oh, help! What happened? Oh, the lousy pole. Never did fix this thing permanently. I just hadn't planned. Hmm? Nothing. Why don't you just stay on the ground, small fry? What about the others, the window curtains? You want them down, too? You want them down, take them down. What's eating you? Banana. What? Banana. You want a bite? No, no. I said, what's eating you? Oh, me. What's eating you? I asked you first. What's eating me is trying to figure out what's eating you. Oh, I see. Well, what's eating me is trying to figure out what's eating you. I guess that just about exhausts this investigation, doesn't it? What about those brackets? You want them, too? Hmm? I don't want a stinking thing. You want them? All right, do we want them? Sure, they cost money. About ten cents, I guess. Okay, I'll get the screwdriver. <laughs> so don't. Honey, look. All I meant was, do we really need all this junk? What do you mean, junk? This is good stuff. Forty-seven cents a yard. Reduced. You can make eleven different things out of this. Same ten. Why don't we knock off for tonight, honey? Go someplace nice for dinner. You look kind of tired. I'm not tired. But why are you so down on the dumps? I'm down. I'm in sixth heaven. Stop rushing to the rescue. You're killing me with kindness. We're supposed to be celebrating my passing the bar exam. Packing joyfully so we can be together. Yeah, every crummy thing I put in the box, I feel worse. Why, honey? I don't know. It's like something's out of whack, you know? Jerry, why don't we just sort of quit horsing around and get married, huh? I mean, after the divorce comes through, Natch. I got a lot of plans for us, Jerry. I won't be just a ball and chain. You know the first thing I'm going to do? Take up shorthand. Oh, shorthand's the one thing this romance has lacked from the very beginning. So, then when you open your own office, there I am. A shorthand secretary. You'll save a lot of dough on me. Besides that, you know what else? I'm going to fix up the flat real nice. You can't entertain now. A cockroach committee comes up out of the sink to see who's there. We're planning on doing a lot of entertaining? 
sure, why not? Customers, partners if you get them, the talmen, criminals maybe even. You can't entertain in a dump, can you? Well, I should say not. It'd be shocking if some dope addict that just murders his mother came up and got a look at a cockroach. <laughs> and then maybe later we can move into a real apartment house. You know one thing I always wanted to live in a house with? Me? An elevator. An elevator you can entertain anybody. I guess you can. I never looked at it that way. The radio in with the toaster. You know, I think we're beginning to make a dent. Jerry? Yeah? Uh... You, uh... Doctor, what's the name lately in, uh, Omaha? Yes, as a matter of fact, she's called me several times in the last couple of weeks. Why? I just wondered if she uh, said anything about the divorce. She'll be coming through pretty soon, though, huh? It came through on the 14th, two weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me, Jerry? Well, it shook me up a little more than I expected, I guess. I needed the time to get used to the idea. You didn't want me to know. No, I guess I didn't. Until I got on top of it. I'm sorry. You talk to her so much on the phone, you tell her about me? That you moved in with me? Yes. You're dirty lost and you didn't tell me about this! Smash them! Smash them! Who needs them? I'm getting out of here. Get off. Jerry, why didn't you tell me? I couldn't. No, you can only tell her about me. My God, even when you divorce her, it's the secret you have with her. One of these days you'll marry me. She'll know it, and I won't. Kittle, you're not going. Now you look out, Jerry. Oh, sit down. I told her about you for a reason. Because she asked me to come back. She wanted me to come home. Well, I want you here. I'm here. Yeah, but I want... I want all of you here. I mean... I don't want just... To... Jerry. Listen, you're my friend. I'm your friend. Then tell me the truth. Would, would you ever... Would you ever once say I love you? I only said it once. Yeah, but there can be a second time. Lots of people, it happens. The marriage went sour. You said so yourself. You said you wanted it to stay dead and buried. It was buried. Alive. Look. This says, the bonds of matrimony are severed and held for naught. I knew the day I got it that any two people who live together as long as Tess and I have, as deeply as... Well, you just can't tell where one person leaves off and the other begins. It's like... Look, once at a party I was telling a dream I had, and right in the middle of it I noticed a funny smile on Tessa's face, and I suddenly realized it was her dream I was telling. This... This isn't true. All the courts in the world will tell you it's true, but... it isn't. The bonds can't be... 
held for naught. How come we're having moving day? Why'd you tell her no? I told you to make a claim on me, to depend on me. I practically forced you to do it. Gittle, I care for you. I don't want to see you hurt or lost or shortchanged. So what's the future, Jerry? You gonna think any less about her? Little time will pass, everything will be hunky-dory. How am I going to give her a competition? Have a hemorrhage twice a year? Trap you that way? I got half of you by being a wreck on your hands. Is that how we're going to go on? Oh, you got to shortchange me, Jerry. Well, I've tried not to. Well, sure, that's what's out of whack. How hard you try. Who works that hard if everything's okay? Things aren't even steven with us, Jerry. Who do all the giving? Because what I have to give, you don't want. And what I want, you can't give. Doesn't matter if I learn shorthand or uh, if I learn how to play a bugle standing on my head. You don't love me, you don't love me. And time isn't going to make one lousy bit of difference. Now, listen, Jerry, I'm the one in a trap. You move in with me, I'll... Oh, I'll nudge you into marrying me. I know I will. <laughs> and then what'll I have? I don't want to have to spend the rest of my life begging. It's not good enough for me, Jerry. Not anymore. I want somebody who'll feel about me. What you said about her before. What do you say we give each other the gate, huh? For my sake? So I can go back? No. Whether you go or stay. Oh, I tell you the God's honest truth, Jerry. I didn't take one free breath since that hemorrhage. I want to get out of here so I can breathe. kitchen stuff, mostly with the janitor, so if there's anything you want. No, I won't want anything. Well, uh, if you do, anything important, I'll be at the Hotel Commodore in Lincoln. That's Lincoln, Nebraska, not Nevada. Not Nevada. And if you need anything in a hurry, really, will you call Frank Tobin? 
You don't have to explain anything to him. It's all taken care of. Just call him. Yeah. No? no. Promise. Be generous, Kittle. Okay. I promise. Good. I'm okay, Jerry. Honest. I bounce up like a jack in a box, you know? You just get what you want out there, huh? Well, I'll try. At least we won't make the same old mistakes. All we'll have is what I earn, beginning with a desk, a telephone, pencil, and what's in my head. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you, too. You're the salt of the earth, honey. Don't waste it. I won't. Listen, it's a big city. There's a guy around some corner. I'll find him. I've got a better opinion of myself now. I'm going to propose more often. I'll send you a birthday card now and then, huh? Say twice a week. Get on, what am I doing? You're doing right, Jerry. I mean, I don't want any handouts either. That's no favor. No. No, we both know that, I guess. And I'm not going to just be passing them out either. I, I want somebody, we'll take care of each other. It's all mine. Not like Sam or Jake. There between them, they couldn't take care of a chicklet. Things look a lot different to me now. Oh, you did me a world of good, Jerry. Did I get them? Really? Because if I could think that... You helped me. Listen, this is the first time I come out with more than I went in. I, I mean, whoever this guy is, he'll owe you. Thank you. She'll owe you, too. More than she'll ever know. Well, so long. I love you, Jerry. As long as you live, I want you to remember the last thing you ever heard out of me was, I love you. I love you too, Evan. <laughs>